Negative 35 this morning. Got an eight kilometer hike into my camp where I've got lots of nice firewood. And I noticed some steam coming up from this log pile here in this forestry cut. And there's some icicles there. There's clearly been warmer air coming out of this pocket for a while. And I'm wondering what would cause that. Could it be an animal denned up in there? Somewhere down there. Water doesn't make sense because I'm on a bit of a high point here. Shouldn't be water there. The only other thing I could think of is like a, an old fire smoldering down there, but that's highly unlikely here in the middle of winter. So I'm wondering what's causing this steam. Past the halfway point of this eight kilometer trail. Eight kilometers is a long way, breaking through fresh powder here. There's a packed trail, but six inches of powder on top of it. got this camp set up the last time I was in here. Really nice to come to this in, this in these cold temperatures and have it all ready. One thing I haven't done is, is finish splitting this wood. So that's next on the agenda and then hopefully I'll have at least enough for a couple of cold nights. There we go. Busted open this log. And look who popped out. Little grub. Might as well throw that on a hook tomorrow. Handle's frozen at the top. Some of the guy lines have some slack in them and the tent's sagging because of the snow weight that was on it. Just pulls this in a bit. So I need to tighten it up. I could dig out the snow anchor. Snow anchor is just a stick like this, buried in the snow and packed in, and hold a lot of tension, like I couldn't pull this out right now. So that's in there good. I don't really want to remove it. I'm just gonna create a little extra tension in the line by twisting it around the stick. There. Drive that in, pack that in as well. That's nice and taut.
feels good. <coughs> Throat feels a little hoarse from heavy breathing in the cold air. But yeah, this feels really nice. Such a good feeling for it to be frigid outside and have all this fire. This is tons. I'm very happy with it. That water I just pulled out of the lake is already freezing over. Bunch of water boiled. Oh, that's hot steam. <laughs> and a bit of water boiled in the pot for this. Pad Thai. Had to wrap it up in this bag because the uh, package got slid open. So I'll just rehydrate it in this pot covered. Pad Thai is one of my favorite meals too, so that's why I'm having this tonight. Just out of everything I've got, this is what was calling to me. Long haul in, lots of firewood splitting. Not a not a terribly tough day for winter camping. Winter camping every day is like is challenging, physically. You just can't avoid that in the winter. But uh, if you want to stay warm with a fire, but it's all worth it right now. And this is going to taste amazing. Some bacon, but it's frozen solid, so <laughs> get them apart later, I guess. I was trying to avoid dishes out here. Gonna have to open the door. It's a sauna in here. 40 degrees Celsius, over 100 Fahrenheit. The stove is rocking. Terrific brekkie this morning. Flurries are drifting down. The wind is picking up, but the temperature is rising, so should be able to hack it out there and get some fishing in finally. Can offer you some charcuterie. More for me. Oh yeah. drill my first hole here. Had a pretty scary incident recently. I was out ice fishing with a couple guys, drove snowmobiles out on the lake, drilled a bunch of holes, set up our lines and we were just hanging out. Suddenly one guy shouts out, get a pole! They'll remain nameless so they don't get any grief at home. But uh, yeah, he went through out of nowhere. 
It's mid, mid late January here in northern Ontario. Ice is usually pretty good and safe at this point. Ice is dynamic. Lake ice is, it changes, it, it breathes. It, it was a real eye opener. Like I walk out across lakes probably way too confidently and I only bring my picks out early in the season. Once there's a foot of ice or more, usually I'm pretty confident. But I'll be keeping these with me year round now after seeing that. It's scary if you're alone, getting yourself out. And the reason for these picks is that you can pull them out of your, your uh, pocket or around your neck and use them to claw out and get grip on the ice surface. So it was a good lesson learned. Everyone is okay. But yeah, that was that shook my faith in the ice. Walking out on it now, it, it feels different. Gonna have to get used to that. This lake has lake trout and pike. Lake trout would be ideal. You can see all this water on top. Good two inches of water and slush. Down there, there's uh, there's some good black ice down there, but not a ton, maybe five or six inches. And then about a foot of this white ice, which is not good quality, some slush mixed in there. This lake bottom's out at about 200 feet deep. So, and I'm on that deep basin here. So this would have been the last part of the lake to freeze. So evidently a bunch of snow came in and, and put a cap on this and it hasn't been able to freeze effectively since. So. That's uh, it's not good quality. Found several of those grubs yesterday in the spruce. So yeah, I'm gonna throw that on the hook. On this white tube jig. One of my favorites for lake trout. And hopefully add a bit of a scent. That's my lure dropping down. 35 feet of water just on the edge of the basin, so I'll work my way out deeper, but this isn't a bad place to start for Lakers either. Small marks on the sonar. Could be just a little school of minnows or something. Anyway, this should be a good spot. I sent the underwater camera down and I'm on 35 feet of water right beneath me. About a foot this way, there's a little, a pretty good rock shelf actually, which is perfect for targeting lake trout or any other fish really. To have a rock face that the fish feels like it can trap prey against is always really good. So. I'm trying to leave my lure right down there, right beside that rock face. And hopefully something's going to come along. I don't think I'll be moving too much today. I'm on the leeward side of the lake. All on this side, it looks like a, a sandstorm in a desert. The wind is just blowing hard across the lake. So unless I want to get whipped by snow all day, I think I'll, I'll be staying here. Sean, little laker. Yep. Oh. That's, that's one for keeping. Oh. Perfect. Maybe just a nice little keeping fish. Oh. It's bleeding, so it's a good one to keep. And I brought this club out here to dispatch immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. Has marked anything on the sonar. It's been, been at it a couple hours. And that uh, maggot's still on there. 
see against the white tube, but it's there. It's going to be a good dinner. It's a snowmobile coming in. I can hear it. Yeah, four guys from Manitowas just came in for the day. They briefly got stuck in slush here. It's pretty bad. When I when I got stuck in the slush here, it was a lot worse. I have a lot less experience, I guess, of getting out of it. But nasty stuff. So I want to get this fish cleaned up before it's frozen solid. Unfortunately, my filleting knife is nowhere to be found. However, I do have a sharp blade and it's on my auger. So I'm just gonna try and weigh this down, keep it fixed in position and I can work the fish over the blades, the sharp blades. And you're probably thinking, why don't you just use your pocket knife? I don't carry a pocket knife. To me, it's just dead weight. Out of hundreds of days of doing backcountry camping, I think this is the first time I've ever wished that I had a pocket knife. I just don't use it. Lots of people do. I don't. Okay. These blades are incredibly sharp, so they'll do the job. Just want to hopefully do it without puncturing the organs. Okay, with that open, I can gut it. I'll throw these guts down my, my fishing hole and just pulling back, pull off the head. Guts come with it. There. That's not bad. And I'll just cook it kind of whole here in the pan. Clean the bloodline with my thumbnail. You can see as I hit its spine, there's a, still a nervous reaction, nervous system reaction to uh, for it to twitch. And I'm just gonna cut the tail off so it fits more easily in my pan. So I gotta be careful on these blades. If a slip could cut my hand pretty badly. There. Okay, problem solved. I'll go clean this in the water and send the remains down the hole. The wind is really whipping out there now. Came in to warm up and I'm just gonna cook up the trout now. That little trout is all I need, so I don't need to be greedy. I'm just going to stop there. Grateful for that little, little fish. Okay. Okay, let's have a look. Looks beautiful. And the meat should just flake right off the bones. Is really good. Gotta love small trout. Really not fishy at all either. I don't mind fishy, but this is just beautiful and clean meat.
walk down the lake to see how those guys are doing today. But I'm gonna have to abandon that because the slush is just ridiculous. Went in deep there, had two almost near soakers of my boots, so it's just not worth it. Not too pleasant to walk here, so. Not too much time left in the day. Just gonna enjoy it around camp. Tough nut to crack. Yesterday I left this nice beeswax candle about a foot away from the stove and it created a river of wax coming out of the stove side of the candle. But I'm just going to block that up by letting the wax hit the snow and then the wax will cool right away and kind of dam that little river that was created. or just spill all over my fingers. Take two. There we go. Now that's working. Yep. How oddly satisfying. Full thermos for tomorrow morning. Bottle of hot water for the sleeping bag. It's only supposed to be minus 10 overnight with this uh, southern storm blowing in. So a cold camp, which is nice, means they don't have to stay up all night and stoke the stove every hour and a half. This is my favorite moment of the whole day out here. Just get to lay down, rest my back, and read and, and peace for a couple of hours, if that, if I stay up that long. Got half a foot of snow outside. It's beautiful. Veggie chili for brekkie. Some garlic naan. If you put it on a slab of wood, it's chicanery. All the snow, beautiful, and the snow insulates the tent, but I've got to get rid of it away from the tent because the heat of the stove melts it, the stove cools, and then it freezes, and the tent gets all this ice all over it, so it becomes a real mess if it's not dealt with. Yeah, that's about eight inches of snow.
some more pineapple and coffee after a good hike. Had to get out in the beautiful snow, just went over land to get out of the slush. It was great. Oh my. I have tons of firewood left. Just enjoying it this afternoon. Cheers to a great little trip. Sun's going down. Temperature is plummeting. Stove is cooking. And the sky is clearing. Should be a great another great night for the stars. So quiet. Forecast calls for minus 29 tonight. It's already minus 22 or 23. And it's just, it's such a cool feeling to have all this firewood and, and feel safe, like just surrounded by cold. And it's only getting colder. It's the kind of cold that could kill you if you're caught in a bad situation but it, it just amplifies the comfort inside of there, knowing what it is out here. A little simple comfort food tonight. A couple of non calzones. Stars are incredible tonight. Big Dipper's hanging out over there. This is one of the oldest tricks in the book, but if you don't know it, you got the handle of the Big Dipper and the cup. Last two stars in the cup, line them up, they point to Polaris, the North Star. Two below this morning. Let's see if the temp gun agrees. 
Yeah, just about 33, 34 below on this. Take your pick. That's cool. Only takes a minute for exposed fingers to start feeling a little painful. It's a good temperature for making coffee. I've got powdered milk with cold water and granola with dried fruit. It's just as fun as it looks. It's, my understanding is it has to be at least 25 below and you need boiling hot water. And a hood is a good idea in case you accidentally follow through and dump it down your back. What a morning. Huh, look at it drift off. Oh, that's so cool. I'm all packed up, cleaned out the stove, have enough firewood for one night when I come back to pack out the actual tent and whatnot. Some fresh snow, it's all set for when I come back. And it's time to haul out what I can. I cached my fishing gear yesterday two and a half kilometers down the trail, so that'll help. It's the hilliest part, so it'd be nice to not have that weight for now. Got the two sled train rigged up. I can just nest one sled inside the other if I just want the one, but with these PVC pipes, you can connect them into a train and then it spreads the weight and floats the load better. Just saw some animal loping through the snow. It was either a pine marten, a fisher maybe. Oh, oh, come on, come back out. I see it there on the edge of the trees. I'm looking at it from, I don't know, 100, 200 meters, so can't tell from here. Oh, what was that? Could have been a weasel too. Oh man, I, uh, my camera battery was too cold and I had to switch batteries and miss the shot. After seeing the footage properly, I'm pretty sure that it's a pine marten, but let me know what you think. If it was, it was the first I've ever seen. Went off in here. Oh, it was so close. Foiled by a cold camera battery. Oh, that was awesome. Oh. <coughs> that was a long eight kilometers. Do like doing a 
8 kilometer portage but about 50 degrees colder than normal. My mouth is a little frozen. But so worth it. Great experience, great four days. Pushed my own personal boundaries a little bit and I'm looking forward to the next one. Just hope my car starts. Sorry, old girl.